Okay, so are we ready to start? So as Professor Corno told you the last class today, we're supposed to do an exam simulation. So the idea of the exam simulation is not to solve a whole exercise because it is impossible. We just have three hours. But the idea is together, all of us, try to find a solution for a text that has been published the last uh, year, okay? So we are going to try to complete the readme file. I don't know if you have seen the readme file in which you are supposed to design all the components, the table, the API. And then since we can't work on the code because we don't have enough time, I will show a possible solution from an exam that one of your classmates did the last year. So we can analyze uh, how are our decisions, how are our design decisions compared to his design decisions. And I will try to remember some advice to give and some things that you might uh, take into account, not to lose points. And well, I think that's all. And also, I think in the second part, or by the end of the, of the lesson, since the last time you told me that you had some difficulties with the authentication and some things that were not very clear with the authentication, I will show over the um, lab solution how the authentication works and all the steps that must be followed to complete the authentication. Because as you have seen, there are lots of steps in the whole flow to, to do the authentication. And um, since we use Passport, there are some things that we don't understand how, how do they work, how Passport deal with, with some stuff. So I think we can take a look on that, okay? Uh, perfect. So, okay, first of all, the idea is let's try to do it together so I don't have to speak like the three hours. And let's try to, uh, uh, let's try to, to think that this is the exercise that you will have to, to, to implement, no? So let's try to do like the whole, uh, well, the whole exercise, the whole simulation. Uh, Perfect. So this exercise was the, the exercise of the first appeal of the last year. It was called study plan. And I choose it because every one of you had at some point to do a study plan here at the Politecnico. No? The, uh, I don't know how is it in Italian, the percorso didattico. And you have to choose the courses and you have to choose which courses are you going to to attend the next semester. So maybe you have an idea of how a study plan works. So we will read it. Uh, let's try to pay attention at the entities that might be involved in this text. Uh, let's try to start thinking of the possible functionalities that you will find here, and well, then we will discuss them. <clears throat> so it says design. Are you able to see the text? It's fine. OK. So it says, design and implement a web application to manage the study plan of a university student. The application must satisfy the following requirements. The university offers a series of courses. Each course is characterized by, by a unique seven characters code, a name, uh, and the integer number of credits. So I mean, from this phrase, I guess it is pretty clear that we will have something, some table called courses, and I think it's pretty clear all the fields that courses will have now. An ID, uh, a name, and the number of credits, okay? A, a student study plan is a subset of the courses offered by the university, okay? The total number of credits of the courses inserted in the study plan can range from 60 to 80 credits, extremes included, for the full-time option, or from 20 to 40 credits for the part-time option. So at this point, we're saying that a student has a study plan, and a study plan is of two types, the full-time uh, option and the uh, part-time option. And they are different one from, each, uh, from the other because one of them has from 60 to 80 credits, and the other one has from 20 to 40 credits. Okay, it's clear. 
Uh, okay, a single course can have one or more constraints for its insertion in the study plan. So we have that a course can be incompatible with one or more courses, uh, which means that they, can be, they can't be selected together. So they can't belong to the same study plan because they are incompatible one course with one or more uh, other courses. A course can have one mandatory preparatory course, uh, which must be already present in the study plan. So if I am pretending to take, for instance, web applications and software engineering is a mandatory course, then in the study plan, both of the courses must be included, included okay? So, and in this case, it's different with incompatible because in, with the incompatible course, is one or more. Here, instead, is one mandatory course, okay? Like a prerequisite. And a course can have a maximum number of students able to add it into the study plan, the same as in the Polytechnic, you know? It has a limit number of students that can take the course. Okay, so we already have an idea of how the study plan works, no? Um, okay, in the home page of the application, unauthenticated users see all the courses that the university offers. So the list of all the courses available uh, at the university. The list of courses must be displayed in alphabetical order. For each courses, the list shows its description, the code, the name, the number of credits, the number of students that already choose the course, and if present, the maximum number of students that can select it. Okay. And in the course description, okay, the course description may be expanded or contracted by the user and to show any incompatible or preparatory courses. Many courses may be in the expand state at the same time. Okay, so here, this is the specification of what the application must show when the user is not authenticated, okay? Which is basically the list of courses that can be expanded or contracted to show the description and the information of each course. Then once the user is logged, the users continue to see the same full list course, uh, but the user may create an empty uh, study plan, his own study plan, okay? Uh, by specifying the full-time or the part-time option. So the first thing that the, that the student will choose is, is if the course is full-time or part-time option. Um, and this list can be edited according to the following instruction. If a study plan has already been created and has been saved, uh, it will be immediately displayed. So once the user login, the, his study plan will, will be shown because it has already been created and saved in the same page. And it can be modified as below. So when modifying the study plan, it always displays the number of credits corresponding to the courses in the study plan and the minimum, the minimum and maximum uh, allowed values. Uh, you can add a course from the full list to the study plan. So it's, we can think of this as we have the list of the whole courses and we have the, the list of the study plan and we should have the option to add from the list of the, from the full courses into our study plan. And we can remove a course from the study plan if it doesn't violate any preparatory constraint. What does it mean that I can't delete a course if I have, uh, again, for instance, let's, let's think that uh, web applications, that software engineering is a prerequisite of web applications. So I wouldn't be able to delete uh, software engineering because I have web applications in my study plan, okay? So before deleting a course from the study plan, it must check if there is some constraints that we are violating. Um, Um, if a course cannot be added, it will, it will be marked differently in the full list and the application should display the reason. 
So if there is a course that I can't add in my study plan, the, the application should somehow indicate the reason why the course can't be uh, added to, to the study plan. So for instance, if you don't have uh, the prerequisites or there is an incompatibility with another course. So somehow in the list, it must show the reason. And during the editing section, the user might save the study plan in a persistent way. What does it mean, save in the, in the server? Mm. The user may cancel the current modifications, and in this case, the persistent copy, if any, must not be modified. So basically, like save changes, no? If I want to persist that, that study plan as it is, I save it, otherwise I cancel and nothing will be saved in the server. Um, when saving, the study plan must be validated according to the mean and max number of credits, uh, and the user might delete the entire study plan. So he can say, no, I want to start again from scratch, and he can delete the, the whole study plan. Uh, OK, and after all of these actions, the application will be in the logged in home page. No, if he saves, if he deletes, if he cancels the, the modification, he will always be redirected to the home page, to the logged in home page. OK? Is it clear, more or less, how this text works? Perfect. So the first question is, do you think this one is more difficult than yours? or? Or yours is more difficult than this one? Or it's the same? Would you prefer to do this one instead of the one you had? Would you change yours to this one? No. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, somehow if I mean, if you observe and try to abstract this, it's basically the same, no? Of course, here we talk about courses, we talk about study plan, but in your case, we talk about pages, we talk about the content management system. So, I mean, technically, at the end, they are pretty similar. And you will see that here, if we have four tables, in yours, you will have also somehow something like that. It is not that in this case there are four tables to solve the whole exercise and in yours there will be, there will be 10. No, it's more or less the same. Uh, so, okay. So let's try to do this as you will have to do in your, in your exam. So, Have you already started to implement the, the exam? No? Anyone? No? Okay. Uh, so, but have you already uh, downloaded the repository, OK? okay. Anyway, if, if you haven't, there is no problem. Uh, it is just to show you that once you download the repository, you will find something like this. Is, is it possible to, can you see everything or should I, or is better like this? Okay, so you will download a repository that looks like this, okay? So well, as usual, there is a client, there is a server, and there is a readme file, okay? Um, here, just to show you, If you try to execute this repository as it is, it will have like some a very basic functionality that Professor Corno prepared to you so that you can check somehow that everything is fine. Okay, so as usual, you should uh, go with npm install, then go, now first uh, change directory, server, then the npm install, which I have, already uh, run, and um, oh, 
Okay, the first advice, if you don't, <laughs> I don't know, wait. Okay, the first advice, if you still haven't configured it, uh, install no daemon and make sure it works because during the development of the uh, sun, if you don't have no daemon and you have always to stop the server and running it again to check all the changes, it will take a lot of time. No? Instead, with no daemon, everything uh, updates immediately. So please uh, try to use no daemon. Okay, so here we have the server and Ah, another important advice, when you are installing packages, install them npm install the package without the global option, no? Because you know that with the global option, it might install the package in the computer, but not in the package.json, okay? And, okay, I will. Here, there are some important uh, stuff that you must take into account with the submission uh, procedure. So, um, especially paying attention to this, no? Once you have finished everything, my advice is to, okay, uh, make sure to commit everything, no? So every change that you that you make on the project, commit it and push to the to the to the repository. You can do as many commits and push as you want. There is no limit. No one will check if you have a lot of commits, and it won't affect the grade or the evaluation. Okay, and it is better because if you lose something, if something happens, if something goes wrong, you can get back to the most recent version. That should be like a recent version. So my advice is try always to commit, okay? By the end of the project, okay, let me show just how this works and then I will give you some advice of, on, the, on the submission. So if everything works when you download the template, you should see something like this. It is a very uh, stupid application, but if it works, you should visualize something like that and you should get an update. And here in the in the code, you will see that well, there is a client with a very basic application that has just all of this with the button and with the random numbers that it generates. Okay, Professor Corno did the application like this just to test the basic functionality once you downloaded that. And okay, so here everything works. So so we made sure that the, the repository works on our computer. Okay, and what I was going to say to you is, um, once you have finished the application, obviously before the, the submission date, you should do this, uh, add this final tag to the application. The final tag is like, a tag that you add to your repository to indicate that that version, that the last commit corresponds to the final submission of the, of the thing, okay? It is important to add that because in the evaluation, when we are going to evaluate the whole, all the exercises, we have a script that downloads all the repositories and tries to find in the repository the tag, the final tag. So if the repository doesn't have the final tag, the script won't be able to to include the, the repository for the for the evaluation, okay? So please don't forget. And it is done basically with the, with these two commands, which is git. I mean from the from the main folder, and we say git tag final.
and then uh, git push origin task, which I won't execute because that would uh, modify the 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 repository, the template repository. Okay, but you execute that and you should be fine. Then wh what is my advice? Try to Okay, after doing this, after committing and push everything, delete the project from your computer, okay? Delete the folder from the, from the computer and try to follow these steps here. Git clone, which is uh, download again the repository, going to the, because I mean, and try to execute them as they are here because this is how the script that we prefer will, will work. So if you are sure that you could delete your uh, repository and execute these steps and it works, so everything will be fine. Uh, it is important to do this because maybe when you are trying to run something, you notice that some package was installed globally in the computer and not in the package.json and you can fix it before the, before the submission, okay? And you will prevent some uh, some possible mistakes. Okay. Do you have any questions? Everything clear? Perfect. Um, okay, so let's get back to our uh, example. So we have the client, the server, and we had this file, this readme file, which again, my advice is to start by doing the readme file because it has like all the design considerations that you must take into account to implement the, the application. So if you have a clear idea of how your application will look and will work, it will be easier to, to implement everything. If you start doing things randomly, then to make them work and to make them consistent will be very hard. So try to spend some time at the beginning, uh, take seriously this readme file. And if you can manage to have a clear idea of which are the, the tables in the database, which will be how many APIs you will have, uh, which functionality will each API covers and how the visual look and feel of the application will be, it will be easier to, to, to implement everything. So uh, once again, this, this might seem like something uh, boring or uh, useless, but please start by doing the readme, by trying to complete the readme as we will do uh, now, okay? So, so the readme looks like this. And if I were you, I would start with the tables, no? Because at the end, I mean, my approach would be like a bottom-up approach. So at the, at the bottom of the application, at the end, what we have is the database, no? Then on top of that, we have the, API, the APIs that expose the, the, the tables information, the database information. And then we have the, the, the front end. So in, in my case, I would start with the tables, reasoning about which tables you will need in the, in the application. So in this case, which tables do we need? No idea. Come on. Courses, of course, we have courses, and we know which information there must be in courses, no? Which is this one, but it is pretty explicit. Okay, so course courses, students. Okay, yeah, students. 
and for students. Do we have the students' information? No. Study plan. Users that can be okay. We will see students and course and students and users will be the same because at the end the final user is the, the student. Yeah, so they represent the same. Credit, okay. And credit, but okay, but credit would be something that belongs to a course. Okay, so yeah, it, it will make sense, but as a field of the courses. Uh, so students or users, courses, uh, study plan. The ID, which is also a field for every course. Yeah, at, at that point, it gets tricky to, to deal with that. So for, for now, let's say we have users. Let's call this one students. These courses contain all Okay, and here the students will have an ID, uh, a name, surname, I guess. What else might a student have? A study plan. Oh. Ah, okay, if it is a full study plan, okay. Uh, okay. Let's say study plan type. Okay. Uh, what else? Nothing else. Right. I think the text didn't say anything about the students, so it will be fine. Uh, the courses, it was, okay, it had an ID, a name, and the number of grades. No? And there is this study plans. So a single study plan, which information should have? Okay, so it has its own ID, okay? Okay, then the ID of the student. What else? The list, the courses. But how do we manage that, for instance, that, that specification? Because it is a many-to-many -many relationship, no? In the sense that a study plan belongs to one user. OK, no. The study plan belongs to one user and has many courses. Um, Because uh, why do we need another table? No, I mean, in the other table, how would you manage that? Because one study, because one course might belong to many study plans. Uh, and many study plans might have the same course. So we have, uh, do we, we need a many-to-many -many relationship. So in that table, we can have 
the IDs of the students here, the courses, and uh, well, we will consolidate everything here. So how do we call that table? Ah, but here we are forgetting something. How are we going to represent the fact that a course uh, has a prerequisite? Do you remember that the course might have a, a mandatory course to take before? The prerequisite was one. Okay, so that one is pretty easy, no? Because it just has one course. So ID prerequisite to represent the fact that a course might have a prerequisite and that ID will correspond to the ID of the course that is the prerequisite. And um, let me check because here there was something else. And how do we represent this incompatibility with one of more courses? No, because one course might be incompatible with a lot of courses. Uh, the other one was easy because that's with one ID. with another table. Okay, there are two possible uh, solutions to this. One that is less elegant and more difficult to manage and the most elegant and let's say proper to, to do. The most elegant and proper is another table in which I have two columns and I have the course and the incompatibility with, I mean, the idea of two courses. And if they are on the same row, it means that the this course is incompatible with this one, okay? With these two columns, we, ha we can have several times the same, the same course uh, with different courses here. So we can represent the fact that the same course might be incompatible with uh, different courses. And, well, yeah, everything is solved there. Another option that, I mean, is valid, but I do not recommend, is to have another field like this one, no, for each course, having a field, but containing not just one ID, not just one code or not just one ID, but uh, let's say all the codes of the incompatible courses uh, separ uh, split by a, by a comma or by some character and having all of them in the same, in the same field in this database, you know? like having another column that is uh, incompatibility and uh, into that single field of the database, try to populate uh, it with all the IDs of the incompatible courses. Uh, why that one is not the optimal one? Uh, what do you mean? Okay, in that case, it must, it's, yeah, it should be duplicated, yeah. But also managing that would be a mess because each time you have to pay a lot of attention that you are getting the right codes, that you are splitting the, because at the end you will be dealing with a string, no? So from the database, you will be getting, let's say one course is incompatible with many courses, with 10 courses. So you will be getting an, a string. You will have to deal with that string to make sure that you are getting the right code, that you are getting the right information. Then for each thing that you have split it from the string, you will have to do another uh, query on the database. No, because at that point you will just have an ID, but you don't know which course is that. In the other solution, when we have all the information in a table, we 
we can do a join and do a more sophisticated uh, query on the database and we can get retrieve all the information from the database okay so in this case from the also from the technical point of view not just the conceptual but the technical point of view is more difficult to implement okay um, it is not forbidden to implement in in the other way but these are choices that you will be making and you have to try to reason on these two things, from the conceptual point of view, which one makes more sense, but also from the implementation point of view, which one will be more difficult to implement. Okay, so in this case, if we take your solution, what? Contains all the Okay, so we, in the study plan, question, do you think this type of study plan belongs, this information too belongs more to a student or to the study plan? To the study plan, okay? Because I mean the, yeah, this is more from a conceptual point of view, but the student himself doesn't have like a field or an information that belongs to the student saying study plan. It makes sense to talk about the type of study plan when we talk about a student and a specific study plan in, in relation to a study plan. So maybe we can move this field from here to here. Um, Okay, what else do we need? Are we okay with the tables? Are we missing some table? Sure. Why? Because in this case, uh, we are not we are not associating a course to a study plan. No, I mean they are two separate things. There is a study plan, but it doesn't concern at all the courses. And we have the courses, but they don't belong to any study plan. Okay. So somehow we have to build that relation, which is a tricky. A relation because it's a many-to-many -many relationship. No, a course might belong to several study plans, and several study plans might have the same course. No, so when we have that kind of many-to-many -many relationship, the only solution is to build an intermediate table, uh, something like a study plan has courses, and it also basically the solution is having two columns that relates the courses with the given study plan. So if, for instance, the study plan with the ID zero uh, has three courses, so in our table we have we will see zero, 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 and the code of the three courses, okay? Which is basically the same as incompatibility. Okay, so here, let's see courses. I don't know if this one is the, the right syntax, but uh, 
before in uh, SQL, it was the, the intermediate tables where we then like something like courses, as, okay, and here this one should be plural because it is a table, courses, are study plans, uh, and it basically relates the study plans with the courses. So it will have an ID. It will have an ID of the study plan and it will have the ID of the course. Okay? Do we like this? This design, this solution. Are we missing something? Uh, with this solution, are we able to know which courses the student has uh, has has added to the to the plan? In theory, yes, because we have the students, uh, the study plan, and we have. I uh, know. Do we? Oh, okay, we have the student that relates to the study plan with user ID. And within this table uh, of the courses of the study plan, we can check which courses the user has. Uh, can we know which kind of study plan does the user ha have? The same. Now we have the students that is related to study plans, and then we can check here which kind of study plan does he have. Um, Questions. There were some rules according to which the plan was always defined, no? So it was five kinds of study plans and four kinds of study plans. Okay, and there were some number shapes. How do you extract that information that that links into the database? In in which table? Okay, and uh, true would represent what? Ah, okay, that is this one. Okay, but I mean, do we have any need to represent the, the specific numbers of credits of the study plan? No, because we can calculate the, the, the number of credits from this table, no? Because we know in each study plan how many courses we have, and for each course, we know the number of credits, so we can calculate it from here. And we don't have to represent the, the minimum and the maximum, because it is not information that belongs to the, to the database. I mean, it's not, it's like more an application constraint. It's something, it's a requirement that has been specified on how the application should work and what the application should, con should check before creating a study plan. So, I mean, I would not represent into the, into the database the fact that a part-time study plan has from 40 to 60 and the one has to, from 60 to 80, no? Because that are constraints that we can check at the application level. Not at the information level. You you know what I'm saying, but I'm trying to explain. So it's not information that we might be interested into saving into the database. Uh, okay. So are we happy with this database? Are we missing something? Perfect. Okay, so here on the client side,
Okay, so we started with the database. Then this is again um, how I would uh, deal with this. I would try to go with the API server because we already know what information we have, what data we have. And then upon that data, we can start thinking into how are we going to make that data uh, accessible for the application, which at the end, it is the APIs, no? The APIs are the way by which we can get the data from the, from the database. So in this case, um, we have to start thinking about which methods will be, we will be implementing. So the first one, the login, we will also have the login, of course, because uh, we need to uh, authenticate. So this one is the same. Um, then I will show it during the solution uh, of, this, of this exam how this should be uh, filled out, how this information should be uh, filled out in the, in, the, in the readme. But for now, let's try to think just in the, in the URL and obviously in the functionality that each specific endpoint will, will have, okay? So, okay, we have the login, which one we will have here? Which one do you think from the text that we can add like a, an API, a functionality? Let's not think of an API, but a functionality. And what functionality? Retrieve all that. Yeah, the study plan. Yeah, so here we can say a study plan. Okay, I will change here the format, but just to write what we mean by this. Obviously, in your exam, you will have to comply to this format. So this one retrieves a single study plan or all the study plans? All? But do we need to get all the study plans or just the study plan for the user that at that moment is authenticated? Yeah. So I think it would make more sense to get the retrieves uh, a single study plan uh, belonging to the okay and but okay the study plan is just one and it should be just for the authenticated user no uh, this one should be a get or a post or what okay should be get yeah and how do we specify which one is the user for which we are asking the study plan And we will see there that please don't make this mistake that is very common. Uh, you might lose points if, for instance, here in the API, you write something like ID user. Okay because you should never pass information of the user, of the authenticated user, of the login user, in the URL or in the post. No? Because, I mean, when we use passport and when we use cookies and the session ID, the idea is that we can understand from the server which one is the user by taking a look at the session ID. No? From the session ID, we should be able to identify which one is the user that is doing the request. So there is no need 
to pass the the ID of the of the user through the through the HTTP request. And because what is the problem with sending the things like this? Security, because I can write an an HTTP query, an HTTP request, and I can add the ID of the user I want, and the API will retrieve me the, the study plan of any user. Or uh, if not here in the URL, in the post uh, body, I can insert whatever I want, and the server would retrieve me the information of all the users. So uh, never do something like this. And instead of this, we will see how we can get the the information of the user, of the authenticated user from the session ID, okay? Okay, so API study plan. And um, okay, in this case, we have to consider that it might be uh, empty, no? Because maybe a user already has a, a study plan, but maybe not. So if it exists, okay, which one, which other uh, API we might think of? Something yeah to edit the, the study plan. Okay, and how would be like the URL in that case? But in the in this case, what changes? It can be which can be put or post. Well, yeah. But this one, yeah, let's do it with post. And it would be to uh, update or to modify an existing study plan. Okay. But for instance, here there is a decision that you should take because I don't know if you can see. Okay, it depends because one one possible option is to update the whole the study plan, and the other option is to add a help. To a specific study plan. No. If you take the second solution, you will have to do a lot of calls to that API to add each single call to the study plan. In the other case, you will have like the front end with all the, the study plan built there, and you will invoke one single API passing all the calls. Passing all the information of the study plan, and in one single HTTP request, you will be updating or creating the study plan. So it is up to you how to deal with that. In this case, I would like more the first solution that is like uh, consolidating everything in the front end, and then once you have everything in the front end and you have run all the steps, you can pass the whole information through a post to the to the server. And the server gets everything, check it once again. Okay, it's never forget this. So you have what you check in the front end, you have to check it also in the back end. Okay? Because of the same I was saying before, no? It is, I mean, in this case, we can say that all the users will have access to our API through the front end, but for security reasons, if someone has access to our API not using the front end, but just submitting HTTP requests, and we don't check in the API before doing any kind of activation. We are giving the, the chance to anyone to do whatever they want, because we are not checking uh, the, the data, the, the information that is coming from the server side. So on the server side, for instance, you will have also a verification that says, if the study plan is a full, uh, full time, uh, as a full-time option, I will check that the courses that you are trying to to save into the database don't exceed the number of students. No? Or if we, 
I don't know which everybody will, but any any validation that you do on the client, you try to do it also on the on the server side. Okay, uh, you are missing the most easy one because once the user gets into the, I mean, once the user any user uh, opens our application, what do they see? The list of courses, all the courses. No? Because here, if you check on uh, In the home page, unauthenticated users, which means everyone, um, see all the courses that the university offers. So in this case, what do we have? Get Okay. For instance, well, also in this case of the courses, we might take a decision on which information from the courses are we getting from the database. Are we getting all the information of all the courses or are we just interested into getting the name of the course and the number of credits, for instance? In this specific case, I think we are interested into getting everything because here in the text it is specified that each course description might be expanded or contracted. So if we get all the information from the data and we somehow display it into our application, I mean, it won't be visible uh, all the information at the beginning, but when the user clicks a button, it will show the description. But at that point, all the information is already in our front end. Okay, all the data has already been get from the database. An alternative solution that, I mean, it's viable, it's viable, but I don't know how. It's that each time a user uh, expands or contracts the, I mean, the row of the course, doing an HTTP request just to get the information for that single course. But it's not very practical, no? Because, I mean, imagine doing all of one single request for each course that the user wants to see. And if it takes some time to get information, then managing these times, uh, from the technical point of view, managing all of this with the use effect would be a mess. So instead of that, since we already know that we will have to show all the courses and that the user might or might not uh, open the description of all the courses. We can do a single HTTP request, a heavy one in the sense that we are getting everything from the database. But at that point, we know that in our front end, we already have all the information uh, that the user needs at, at that point, all the courses information, okay? So in, in this case, I'm, I'm telling you this just to show that there are choices that you will be and decisions that you will be taking along the implementation. And, and 
there is not one single solution for this, but you have always to think from the conception and from the technical point of view, which one will be easy to manage and will want, which one will be easier to, to implement. So in this case, we can be sure that here we are getting all the information of the, of the course. So in the database, it will be select everything from here. Okay. Um, Oh. Here we were missing something very important, no? What is that then? Okay, yeah, here, yeah, we are missing, we were missing two important things. So here we were missing the username, the, let's say the email or the boy, the username and the, yeah, the password. And uh, here it will be also the salt and, and the stuff for the authentication. Uh, but here, how do we know? It, it says that each course has a limit number of students. No? They are not infinite. So they have a, how do we call that? What is the word? Students, yeah. Let's say math students. Okay. No, because without this, we can't implement this requirement according to which we have to be showing the number of students currently enrolled in that course. Okay. So for each course, we have to represent that. And Okay, so here with these APIs, we are covering like the basic functionality. How do we know the most basic functionality, which is like the basic one? Okay, now this is only can be easy because we, when we are getting the courses, it is just a call name, so we will know which are the we can check in the front end if two courses are incompatible. No, not incompatible, the prerequisite. Okay, so the prerequisite is easy to, to check because we already have all the information of the database or all the information of the courses, we already have it on the front end. No? Because I imagine this that the, the first request that we will be doing to the, to the server is to get, give us all the courses with all the information. Okay. The, the prerequisite is pretty easy. Then the incompatible courses, how do we check that? And when do we check that? That could be an option, but the, the problem is that here it says, <laughs> This, this requirement that is pretty painful because it says that if a user wants to add a course and it is not possible to add that course, the application should inform you why it is not possible to add that course. Okay, one option is to solve it down, to bring everything 
environment and manage and deal with that information and use it as you want. But this is practical because what's happened to a user never uh, adds a specific choice and anyway we are getting all this information at the end of the day. So that that could be an option now. Once the user adds a course to his study plan, we can do a request to the server to get, as in this case, what are we could be we be getting? Yeah. So in that case, it might be sending. Yes, so submitting to the server the idea of the course that has been added to the study plan, even if the study plan hasn't been changed yet, but just for visualization purposes, and we can get back the the ID of the courses that are incompatible with the ID, and maybe the reason why. I know the reason is because it's a prerequisite or a, or a incompatibility. It doesn't say. Reason. Okay, so we get the, the courses, and at that point, we are able on the front end to specify or to add some kind of method to the table. We have to update at that point the table of IAO courses so that it gives some hint of why the course is incompatible. Okay. But for instance, making a decision on of how such functionalities of such uh, maths work makes us reason about how are we going to implement the API, no? Because I mean, we also have, we always have the solution that is getting everything, like basically like downloading everything and then deal with the information. It has like the disadvantage that we are getting a lot of information that we don't know if it will be useful. useful. And not in this specific case, but for instance, let's think into, um, an application that is used by many users that uh, gets updated constantly. If we download all the information, at that point we are getting like a snapshot of the information as it was when we downloaded it. But in the meantime, it might change. And the information we are dealing with, what at that point would not be information updated with the with the real state of the of the program. So at that point, it is the challenge to find the balance between not downloading everything, but not doing requests for everything. No, that uh, that's something you have to constantly be reasoning about. Not doing a super big um, query to download all the information, but also not be doing uh, very small uh, HTTP requests to get everything from. Okay, so there we have another one. Okay, when saving the study plan must be validated according to the mean and max number of credits. What I, what I was saying before, you have to do the validation obviously on the front end, but also in the back end. Okay, delete the entire study plan, should not be that painful because it will be like deleting the, the row in the, in the, yeah, delete all the references to the study plan in the database. Um,
Okay, are we missing something? Do you agree with uh, so far? Obviously, during the implementation, we have uh, you know, a lot of different things. We will get many different proposals and we may propose something in Java, but we would like to get uh, more data science maybe from the back end and more data science from the uh, API. So let's do another one to uh, retrieve something. But it is important to have at least in the beginning some idea of how and, wh and what will be the information we will deal with and how are we going to retrieve that information. Okay, so getting back to our readme file, we have the, um, the client side. So again, the roots and the list of components. Uh, well, it's difficult to try to imagine this. I mean, I want to write the list of components, but what would you imagine as a graphical component in this type of application? Of course, the list of table and columns. No? That will be a table. No? Uh, Okay, uh, the list of in list of JS. Okay, this one. Is the login form, let's say, and it will be in the In the authentication component, okay. How do you imagine this application graphically? If you had to implement this application, how would you implement it? Okay, but you would have like a list of columns. Like a table? Yeah. Like? Yeah. Okay, so it okay. Implement a component that can write the list of the columns and they can write the list of columns and the static line and all that. How, how is the policy going to work? Okay. What do you have to do, no? Like adding the columns. Okay. Perfect. So yeah, and see, be, uh, yeah, because maybe we might have like two lists, no? I don't know if it will be the same component. It might be, we might reuse the same component, but one list is the one that we just showed with all the information. And the other one is the one that dynamically uh, updates according to the study plan that the user is creating. No? Because in the first one, you just see all the courses. And in the second one, according to the courses that the user is adding to the study plan, it will highlight somehow which courses are incompatible or we show messages on which courses can be added or, or might disable some row to disable the to prevent the user from adding a course so okay we might maybe reuse this component list uh, but depending on when on where it is displayed it will behave differently okay okay so we have the list of courses and here we have Um, 
study plan. Okay. Um, which file component? Okay, the nav bar. Do we have something in the nav bar? No, I login. Yeah. <laughs> Here is an important, another important advice. Um, like so, because obviously in all the examples there was the search and all this stuff. But if something is not uh, specifically required in the text, don't try to implement it, okay? So if it doesn't say search for something or the user wants to find a course or you should provide the functionality, let's leave it that way, okay? I mean, if you have time at the end and you can do more stuff, but uh, at the beginning, uh, let's try to, to keep it simple. Okay, so thanks for the, for the example because it was... Uh, Way to list uh, all the React uh, components, or uh, you can list uh, only the the main one, the main, the, the most important. I, I, I think, yes, in the readme. So, like for example, if you can list a uh, uh, main layout uh, uh, component uh, to display. Uh, the study plan uh, with the list of courses, for example. Okay. A way to write it? No, Okay, yeah, maybe, which means that here in the list of courses, there should be like a button or some uh, switch component to switch from the from the view, okay. Ah, yeah, but okay, but it depends. Yeah, and somehow on the on that switch, but it also depends on the authentication, no? Because just just if the user is authenticated, he will be able to see the list of courses that is uh, available, or both, not the other. In this, in that case, that switch uh, component is an HTML element, so you can find it. Uh, there is another one. Because here, if you take a look at this, it says that each course description might be expanded or contracted. No? So by default, if we add like a, a normal table component, HTML table component, we won't be able to satisfy this uh, graphical requirement, which means that maybe we should have like a component representing a row. No? Uh, custom, a customized row that enables to uh, expand and to contract the another component in which the information is shown. No? I suggest, I don't know if you agree, but uh, maybe here we should have a... Um, And maybe well, I, you can you can create 
Okay, and I think it's more organized and easier to understand if you create each component in a separate file uh, intended for each component. But in this case, since course row is something that will belong to the to a list or something that is pretty uh, or that is very um, linked to the list of courses, maybe this one can be in this same file, no? Which is this? Yeah. The list depends on Okay, but in this case, your suggestion would be to the study plan also in this file, this? Maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's also supposed to show the courses. It is just that it will have like additional functions to check, a lot of checks, you know, to check if a course can be added like a new functionality. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, in that case, you're right. <laughs> let's keep it organized and uh, let's create another another component. Yeah. Uh, because in, yeah, also because in the implementation, it's more difficult to get, if you add many components to the same file, then it is difficult to navigate through a code and to understand everything. So it is better to have lots of files with a single component. Um, so, okay, the course row. What else? Does it come into mind something else that we can be including it here? Because for instance, this, this delete at the end is just a button. Uh, this save is also a button, so it's not a very specific or customized component. Ah, okay, yeah, for sure. Okay, the editing, yeah. But how, how the editing would work? That, not study plan. Uh, because at the end, it is just adding a course or removing the course. So it is at the end, it's always the least. Yeah. Maybe another page could be possible. But, but in this case, no, because I'm trying to imagine the, the implementation. It could be easier for the user to have in the same view the available courses and the courses he has started to the plan. Yeah, because, yeah, because for instance, if we have it in different pages and he adds a course and it redirects the user to a study plan, then he should get back to add a new course. So in this case, I guess it is better to have like a, a split, a split like the whole view and have we like two columns with the two tables, yeah. Or to have it, uh, I mean, two areas in the in the website to show at the same time the incompatible courses and at the same time the available courses and the study plan. Yeah, but for but in that case we don't need a uh, maybe a different view, no, because it is like adding something into the into a table or deleting it into a table. For instance, in your exercise, in your exam, I think you will learn um, so many skills. No? Because in your practices, you, in this case, you will have to create this page. And in the administrative view, you have to specify how the page will, uh, I mean, to compose the page by writing the questions, which is um, the questions of the page. So I think in your case, you will have and how you didn't do it. Okay. In this case, since it is moving things from one list to another, I think we should we don't need a form to to do that. And well.
I don't know if we are missing something. Perfect. Ah, okay, here it is written in the readme only main components. The minor ones might be skipped. But it is. Okay. And here, okay, you should add a screenshot of the application. And once you have finished, you take a screenshot that you add here as an image. And then you have the user credentials. Okay. Please add this, these credentials because otherwise we won't be able to access the application and to evaluate the application. So it's important to, to add the credentials here. That's wrong. Um, Okay, so as I told you at the beginning, it obviously it was possible to implement the, the text during the simulation. But now I will show you a solution uh, that I, I mean a random classmate uh, of you did the last year. He got like the the maximum grade. So in theory, it's like a, a his own solution. And well, we can compare it to what we did, and we can see how it matches our 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 design at least no um, okay but before before moving to that uh, do do we find some some similarities between this this design and the design of your exam is there something that in yours, of course, there is pages, no? Then the pages have components, I guess, like the header, the body, and the uh, something similar. Because here, for instance, you have to do a check to see if the number of grades are, are fine. And in the exam, I think you have to do some check to verify that in a page there are present like two components, like the header and the. Okay, which is pretty similar to this because you have to check on the front end that the that it has the same as the prerequisite. Even easier because in this case you are not doing the check with a specific component uh, from the from the data but you are just checking that there is present a header no? a header component in your in your page uh, okay. but in your case you have something like this Okay. Ah, okay. Like it's kind of like the process. Does that the case? The process are actually equal this one because we use that the, the practically the information that we get from the company before we can go and we are done. It's like the external information. But in your case, you have to do some kind of display to show the. Okay, which means that okay, in the pages um, table there will be like a form like published like with a boolean if the process is passing or something is being published and what else? Um, okay, the authentication is basically the same. You have to use authentication and you can use something else. You have to check the pager request and put something in the container that matches the container grade. No? Is there any other check that you have to do? I don't think so. But I think, for instance, in the authentication, you should check 
it on the top it up and down with the you it is not like here that you have to press this or this or this and the pc can go up and down and all that i just keep going to up and down with the okay fine So yeah, I think your exam is easier than maybe than this one. At least that the concerning the data you will be dealing with. Maybe it is more difficult concerning the front end and the graphical uh, part of the of the application, but at least with the front end, the back end seems easier. Okay. <laughs> But if you want, let's do it this way. Just take a break. We can take a break, like 15 minutes break. We will see here at 10.30. And then I show you the solution, and then we go to the authentication 